Hello, dear smart students, and welcome to another English virtual class. Our topic is the house we live in, and today we are going to practice English sounds pronunciation, learn new words, read a text about a house, complete some reading comprehension exercises, and revise the use of an English structure. I mean, there is, there are. Sometimes there are situations when we need to find out some general information. Today we will learn the ways of asking and answering it. Have a look at the screen. Uh, what question would be for these answers? What do you do when you want to ask about an occupation? And the answer should be, I'm a computer programmer. Or, what do you do on weekends? I usually stay home and watch television. Where are you from? I'm from Orhe, Moldova. Where do you live? What should we answer to this question? I live in Chisinau. In which apartment do you live? I live in apartment 57 on the fifth floor. How do you spell your name? And here you have to prove that you know the English ABC. K-E-V-I-N. So, his name is Kevin, right? Do you know that man? He is my teacher. So, let's practice a little bit. Give me, please, the questions to the following answers. I usually watch TV. The question might be, what do you usually do on weekends? Yes, he is my neighbor. The question might be, do you know this man? I live in Chicago. Of course, the question is, where do you live? I am a driver. Do you remember the question? What do you do? I am from Manchester. Of course, the question is, where are you from? All right, I'd like you to pay attention to uh, letter combinations. So today we have the sounds ch and g. Repeat the words, please. Child, chair, chick, chocolate, chars, which, each, teach, lunch, much, picture, furniture, question, kitchen. So, as far as you can see, the letter combination ch is mostly pronounced chi. Then we have t-u-r-e and other combinations. Pay attention to the next sound, g. So letters g and j are pronounced g. Repeat the words, please. Enjoy, job, journalist, village, engineer, George, large. Let's practice reading the sentences. The children have chicken and cheese for lunch. Just imagine. George enjoys his job. Learn the rhyme. March winds and April showers bring forth May flowers. Repeat it as many times as you need. In order to read the text, we have to see the words and to know their meaning, to understand them, for better understanding the text, of course. So the first word is attic. What is an attic? The space or room at the top of a building under the roof often used for storing things. For example, they have some empty boxes in the attic. The next one, rocking chair. Rocking chair. It's a chair set on curving supports. For example, my granny has got an old rocking chair in the room. Stair. Stair. A set of steps that lead from one level of a building to another. There is a huge wooden stair in their house. Top. Top. This is the highest place or part. 
for example, there is snow on the top of the mountain. Next word, stay with. Stay with. It means to remain in a place as a guest. I stayed with my grandparents during the summer vacation. Married. Married means having a husband or a wife. My brother is married. His wife's name is Lucy. Especially. Especially. Particularly. He bought nice flowers especially for her. Okay, so to prove that you already know the words, please give the words to the following definition. Particularly, especially. The highest place, of course, the top. A chair on curving supports. It's a rocking chair. A room under the roof. What is it? You're right, it's an attic. Having a husband or a wife. It means to be married. A set of steps. Of course, a stair. Well done! Now let's read the text and find out some interesting facts about a house. Listen carefully and pay attention to the details. After reading the text, we will complete an exercise. Ready? My aunt's house. I have many relatives. One of them is Aunt Maria. She is my father's youngest sister. She is married, but she has no children. She lives with her husband in a nice house near the park. The house isn't very large. It has three bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, a bathroom, an attic and a hall. I often stay with my aunt and her husband. In the evening we get together in the living room. It's the largest room in the house. There is a nice fireplace in it. I especially like to be there in winter when it's cold and there is snow outside. I feel warm and comfortable in this room. Aunt Maria usually sits in the rocking chair in front of the fire. My uncle and I sit in armchairs. In summer I like to play in the attic. It's at the top of the house. There are some stairs up to it and a very small door. There are a lot of old things in it. There is an old bed next to the wall. There is a desk, a big table and some chairs next to the window. In the corner there is a cupboard. It's full of old toys and dolls. Aunt Maria played with them when she was a child. There aren't any curtains, but there is an old brown carpet on the floor. I know you have listened very carefully and now are ready to complete some exercises. Please use the text to complete the sentences, I mean some words from the text. The name of Tina's aunt is Maria. You're right. She is her father's youngest sister. Where does she live? She lives in a nice house near the park. She has three bedrooms. Next sentence is In the evening they get together. Tina feels warm and comfortable in the living room. Aunt Maria likes to sit in the rocking chair. There are many old things in the attic. Good job! Now it's time to revise some vocabulary. You have studied before and you already know the names of rooms and furnitures. Today we have to revise these, these words for you to remind them. And uh, let's have a look. This is a room. What room is it? It's a living room. What do we have in a living room? So, in a living room, there is a sofa or cushions on it, or armchairs next to the sofa. There is also a lamp on the table or next to the sofa. There is a TV set opposite the sofa. There are some pictures on the wall, a carpet on the floor, 
and some curtains at the window. Next room is a bedroom. What can we have in a bedroom besides a lamp, a carpet and so on? We can have in a bedroom a bed, a bedside table, one or two, a wardrobe, a bookcase. Next room in our house is the kitchen. In the kitchen there might be a fridge, a cooker, a table, some chairs around the table, glasses, plates, cups, knives, forks and spoons. This one is your room. What do you have in your room? Besides the furniture, you may have a table or a desk, a chair, a bed, a bookshelf, some books on the bookshelf, a computer on your desk, some toys, and that's it. Now it's time to practice some grammar. When do we use there is or there are in English? We have probably noticed that presenting the rooms I have used there is or there are. So remember this structure is used when we want to refer to the existence or presence of someone or something. Now let's complete the sentences using there is or there are. Pay attention to the words that follow these structures and then it will be easier for you to complete this exercise. For the first sentence we have there is a table in the kitchen. There are two armchairs in the living room. There is a bed in the bedroom. There are a lot of books in the bookcase. There is a new fridge in the kitchen. There are some toys in the children's room. And the last one, there is a carpet on the floor. To form a negative uh, sentence, we add not, as usual, after the verb. Let's disagree to the following statements. There is a vase on the table, the negative. There isn't a vase on the table. There are two sofas in the living room. There aren't two sofas in the living room. There is a big wardrobe in the bedroom. Now, please pay attention to this sentence. There is no wardrobe in the bedroom. There are a lot of books in the bookcase. The negative form, there aren't many books in the bookcase. Let's go on. There is a new fridge in the kitchen. There isn't a new fridge in the kitchen. There is a computer in the children's room. There is not a computer in the children's room. Or, we may say, there is no computer in the children's room. There is a red carpet on the floor, the negative. There isn't a red carpet on the floor. Or, there is no red carpet on the floor. Okay, now let's wrap up what we have done during this lesson. So, today we have practiced English sound pronunciation. We have learned new words and revised the studied one. I mean, about rooms and furniture in, uh, in them. And then we have read a text about the house. We have completed some reading comprehension exercises. And we have revised the use of the English structure, there is, there are. That's it for today. Bye for now.